Moving on from the blown over leaf scroll, we're going to move to the square corners. There are two of them. And saying they're square corners is perhaps a slight exaggeration. They are close to being square corners. I think if we look at them, they're actually a little more open than 90 degrees. I like to measure the square corners through the center line of the stock because that's the constant, it doesn't move. So let's have a look and see what we can work out. I'm going to draw two 45 degree lines across the corners and center punch those. And I'm going to measure that distance. That's the center line, that doesn't move. The inside and the outside dimensions will both change and they'll change half the thickness of the material per side. So quarter of an inch this side, quarter of an inch that side. Total half an inch. Same with this, it'll move quarter of an inch this side, quarter of an inch that side, total half an inch. So as that's a moving target, I'm going to stay with the center line, which is a constant. I'm going to place my dividers on the center line and measure to the other center punch on the center line and then I'm going to measure that against my rule. And I've got two and one eighth inches. I don't like working from the end because that's worn on my rule. So I come in one inch and then subtract an inch from my end result. So I have two and one eighth inches between the center line, the 45 degree angle of the upset square corners. You'll notice as I set my square here that the corner is not 90 degrees but open from 90 degrees right down to the root of the corner. If I generate a 90 degree upset square corner bend and then try to bend it to create the, scro the scroll, that stress in bending is going to be concentrated right here at the stress riser or concentration of the stresses and we'll end up generating a crack right there. So I like to forge mine slightly open and then I've already started the bend for my scroll work if I need to. You'll notice, I hope, that I have two center punch marks, very distinct on this side because the area hasn't been forged, and on this side, not so distinct, it's going to be right there, um, where I forged the square corner bend. Hopefully that center punch mark is on the diagonal, and you can see there, of the corner, so it's in the right place. These are two and one eighth inches apart, exactly the same as the distance between our two center punch marks on our drawing. Where these two center punch marks are relative to the whole bar is a factor of determining how much material is needed to generate this scroll and then leaving that from the end. Certainly we can start in the middle of a bar and just put two square corners and then chop off what we don't need. But at some stage we have to make a cut if we're going to do a taper to a weld. So we need to know how much material is involved in that portion of the scroll. Before I can put the square corners in the bar, what I need to know is what is the distance from this datum to the datum that we established earlier at the base of the leaf. And to do that, I'm going to use the same dividers as I used before, and I'm going to step that out. One, two, three, one, 22, 23, 23 and a half steps. Remember the steps, not inches. So we have 20, three and a half steps. Now to convert those to inches I'm going to divide that by two and that's going to give me eleven and three quarter inches in length and I've taken that from the datum here midpoint along the square corner bend up to the end of the datum here where the scroll and the leaf branch. Now we've already done some work here, we already have our piece. So from that 11 and 3 quarter we know to subtract this material here. And I'm going to measure to midpoint along the scarf as we have this upset here ready for the weld. So I'll measure that and I'm showing that at about 2 inches. So I take my 11 and 3 quarters and I subtract 
two inches to get nine and three quarter inches long. Again, now this is from the datum here to the break point of the weld for the two pieces. Now because the material is a constant three quarters of an inch wide, I don't need to worry about doing a volume calculation. I can make do with an area calculation when I'm comparing the area of this scroll to the area of my unforged stock. Now the weld point here, I'm showing that as being five sixteenths of an inch thick. I know the material here at the corner is one half of an inch thick. And I'm going to divide that by two to get an average. Once I've worked that out, then I can multiply that by my nine and three quarter inches and that will give me the area for my scroll. So the formula we're going to use, we're going to take the height of the material at height A, we're going to add that to height of the material at point B and that's either end of that scroll that we were looking at. We're going to divide that by 2, that will give us the average and we're going to divide times that, multiply that by the length and we said that was 9.75. So let's plug some other numbers in here. H1A was 0.5 or half an inch. I'm going to add that to H1B which was uh, 516, so 0.3125. Put that in brackets because we want to solve that first. Put everything over 2. Multiply that by 9.75. Luckily, I have a calculator right here, so I'm going to plug in some numbers and come back to you with a number. So, what I have is 0.5 plus 0.3125, so that's 0.8125, multiplied by 9 and 3 quarters, or 9.75, and I get an answer for that of 7.92. I divide that by 2 and I get an overall answer of 3.9609 square inches. What I need to do now is compare that to the bar that we have that we're going to use our square corners which is half an inch thick. I don't care about how wide it is because that's a constant. So I know that it is half an inch thick but I don't know how long I need. That's the unknown. So I've got 0.5 times length Two. That's the length I don't know. I know that when that multiplies that, it should equal that because I'm trying to compare and contrast. 9609 square inches. So if I take this and divide it by 0.5, those will cancel it out, leaving that there. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So I need to take that number and divide it by 0.5. I'll come back as soon as I've been to my calculator. I already could have done that because it's just the opposite to that. So I've actually got 7.92 inches equals L2. So that's the length that I need of my square bar for the upset square corner. Sorry, of my rectangular bar for my upset square corners. 7.92 inches long. I don't know what 0.92 of an inch is, but I do have a card that compares fractions to decimals to millimetres. So I'm going to look at 0.92, which is going to be over here, and I've got 0.9219 is 59 64 Well, that's not a real number for me, I can't understand that. But 15 sixteenths I can. So I've got 7 and 15 sixteenths of material that I need to measure up from, so I can start from the end, come up 7 and 15 16 wherever that is that's the start of my first square corner my datum measure from that 2 and 1 8 inches that's the start of my second corner and I go from there and those are the two datums that we looked at earlier so now what this does for me 
is I can make these two corners knowing that I've got enough material to make that weld and taper all the way back to the transition point with the stock that I've already made. Now that I've worked out the length of material that I need to make the scroll, I need to concentrate on the other end. I'm going to draw this portion down to 3 eighths of an inch thick here, as the centre bar is 3 eighths by 3 quarters, and half inch would look too heavy there. So I'm going to step out the length again, from the centre here, to my datum. I'm going to average out the stock size by adding my half inch to my 3 eighths and dividing by 2 and I'm going to calculate this area and I'm going to compare that to my half by three quarter flat bar. Once I've added the material I need for this section, the two and one eighth and the material I need from this section, that is the minimum that I require to be able to go to work. I may need to leave a little more than this so that I can hold it in the vise to make this corner but I still know where my severance mark is on the bar before I go to work.